Karobu Engineering. Is it worth it? So uh, I've been getting a few questions about performance tuning for 560 SLs from Karobu Engineering. And I think that this is an interesting topic that we need to cover because some people might see the 107 and they might go, man, I would really love to lower my car and do some modifications to it to make it a more fun car to drive. And Karobu kind of fills that niche with engine tuning kits and performance kits and all sorts of, um, all sorts of neat stuff that I think can really make an engine, uh, or a car more exciting to drive. But let's take a close look at some of Karobu's products and then we'll see how good of a value it actually is. Now, the first thing people have asked me about is the exhaust system. In fact, one of our subscribers bought the exhaust system, but nine months later or something like that, it still was not delivered. Now, it seems like the exhaust system, because it's a stainless steel unit, might be extremely durable, but is it the same quality as a Mercedes unit? I will have to say that nothing be beats a Mercedes or Gillette or Eberspacher exhaust system. The exhaust systems that Mercedes used were second to none, and even the best stainless steel system in the world does not parallel a factory Mercedes system. A second thing people ask me questions about is the injection system modifications done by Karobu. Well, I can answer this question in a heartbeat in case anybody's asking, and I know some of you are asking. KE Jetronic is the best injection system ever invented, and I don't see any reason why anybody should replace it with something else. Even if you think you're getting more power, what's more important than more power is paramount reliability, and KE Jetronic offers paramount reliability. A third point people bring up is the suspension lowering kits. Now, to lower the suspension in an R107 with eccentric bushings, you have to remove the front and rear subframes and totally disassemble them and then take out this precious forever Mercedes rear control arm bushings. Mercedes suspension systems are designed to last a long time, particularly the bushings in the rear. And I would say that anybody who thinks that they should replace those bushings needs to carefully consider the origin of the Karobu parts. We don't know where these bushings are made and how long they're going to last and really how they're going to affect alignment because they don't discuss that on their um on their website and i think that if you end up with a negative camera in a 560 mm -mm -mm. now another thing that people point out is the spring lower lowering lowered springs well there's a problem when you lower a 560 sl it's that front oil pan the cast aluminum oil pan is extremely delicate and expensive and a lot of work has to be done to change it including removing the front subframe now i don't know about you but if i were going to lower my car and i understood there was a 50 percent greater risk of breaking my fragile aluminum oil pan i don't know if i would actually do that modification I've seen too many broken oil pans, and let me tell you, the car might look cool, but it's not worth it. Another thing that I bring up are, are thicker sway bars. It doesn't really hurt to add a thicker sway bar as long as the factory bushings will handle it. I've noted that Karobu does have some thicker sway bars available, and I think that that could actually benefit the 560 SL, as well as their tougher shock combination. So those are two items that I would want to use. With the shocks, though, I would want to make sure that they're actually an upgraded shock and not the same type of shock that the car left the factory with. There aren't a whole lot of shocks out there that fit a 560, so there's a chance that they may just be saying, oh, we're putting new shocks on. Now, another item that I think that Karobu could probably, well, they could probably do better with, although it is a good idea, is the 16-inch R129 style wheels. I say R129 style wheels because they're replica wheels. The, the wheel selection is good. The 90 to 92, 300 SL and 500 SL wheel is a great wheel and tire combo for a 560 SL. But the problem is the source of these wheels. These wheels are coming from Maxi Light. They are made in China. They don't have steel reinforcements where the wheel bolt goes. So they're all show not lots of go. Once you pull these wheels on and off, inevitably when you have to do tire changes because you're getting tire wear and because these are low profile tires, 
you're going to find that the center of the wheel where the bolt goes in starts to collapse. Now, I understand that they need to find new wheels because the wheels have to be perfectly round and smooth. And I know that Maxi like claims to have very high quality wheels, but unfortunately the manufacturing process is the same. Isn't the same as Mercedes. So my message to Maxi Light is find the company in the EU that will build these wheels like Renal or Rial or one of the other car BBS get them to make you high quality wheels with the original steel inserts in the middle. There are some brake upgrades they mention. I don't know if the 560 SL needs better brakes. I think the brakes are pretty good. But if you want to do the compulsory drilled and slotted rotor, okay, I can understand why you'd want better heat dissipation. At the end of the day, the 560 SL is not really a track car. I don't think it's a great car to get if you want a performance driving car. And I'm not really going to say this very often, but I will say that if you want a performance driving Mercedes convertible, get a modern AMG car or get at least a 500 SL or similar vehicle. Don't spend time and money and resources trying to make a 560 SL, which is a great car and my first choice for a 107, something that it is not. If you are going to try to get a high performance driving experience together, the 1990 through 92 500 SL is waiting for you. It is fast, it is well over 300 horsepower, it's relatively fuel efficient. While I don't like the power top and the interior build quality issues of an R129, typically to somebody who's looking for a more higher performance driving experience, this stuff doesn't matter anyway. Anyway, I hope you like this video. I can't wait to see in the comments and let me know what you think of my opinion. I can't wait to, uh, to see how much criticism there is. <laughs> Please like, share, and subscribe, and tap that bell for notifications. And to all of your Patreon, to all of our Patreon supporters, I hope you're getting great value out of this channel. We'll talk soon. Bye.